Hey guys, Drew here with Hobbs and Hot Rods. Thanks for tuning in. Gonna give you an update on my wiring and we're gonna update my handheld and I'll answer a few questions. This time on Hobbies and Hot Rods. So here's the new improved 4D4. Got the YN Street Warrior intake on there. I did do a small amount of port work to it, nothing major. Typical casting flaws. <clears throat> you can see some wiring I took away here. Most of it is under the dash now. You know, the only thing that comes out here now is the power wire to the fuel pump. And then I also put a terminal block up here, but uh, way less wires. I only have the one wire now, the wire that goes up on the firewall, that's factory. Everything else is factory. You just have the one coming out of the firewall hole there. You can see where my ECU was right here. This was never supposed to be permanent. This inner fender's coming out sometime anyway. And then my fuel pump's mounted there. Uh, I still have the AN fittings going to my original fuel line. I haven't made a mount for that yet, but they hold fine. I was going to run just a single fuel line from here to the nipple on the hard line that comes up the frame. Fun fact, the uh, nuts on this are actually from a windscreen on a motorcycle. This is kind of like a anchor in a wall. The more you tighten up, the harder it squishes. You can see where the nuts are, where the nut is here in the rubber, but it has all that space that collapses and stays tight. I used to do motorcycle mechanics, so I have a lot of leftovers. <clears throat> and I have a lot of uh, shiny bolts too, as you can see. And then uh, you can get these started and then they tighten up like so. If you have any of those leftovers laying around, they're handy for something like this. For all you C10 guys out there, this is the grommet that was in the hole over there. You can see it's pretty much full Factory wiring still in there. Vacuum line still functional. <clears throat> this is the factory grommet that was in there and it had little metal clamps over the ends of it. And you could see how much space you open up when you pull that out of there. And then here is a sleeve I 3D printed to make sure for mock-up purposes, this is the diameter of the hole. And I put a little, you can hardly see it, but I put a little, uh, a little head on there, a little, there's a little edge on here that catches when it slides in. And then you can just take a razor blade, if I can stay focused on this thing, and just cut this. So you can, this will stretch enough to go over the wires, and then you can push it in the hole. I just need to make it longer with a little bevel over the end so it stays in there. But this does fit, I tested it before I ran all the wires through. Thing you might notice is the oil Pressure sensor for the mechanical gauge used to run up here and then also with the mechanical temp gauge tube, it ran through there with that, uh, I had some orange heat stuff on there. <clears throat> and now it comes out over here. I'm running it through this hole now. It's a little more out of the way. It looks a little nicer. So you can see from here. But this copper line, I didn't have to drill any holes I just rebent it, and these are Mag Daddy magnets. I don't know if you've heard of these or not, but they uh, work for anything that's broken on your firewall that used to hold a wire. You can just put this right next to it and zip tie to it. This has a 10 pound pole, so it's supposed to hold 10 pounds up. They also have 15 pound pole, which will hold 15 pounds. So uh, these are kind of expensive. I think they're about two bucks a piece, but the convenience of not having to drill a hole anywhere is fantastic. So I've got one on the frame. And then all the way up to here. Also, this one's broken up here. So right there, you can see I've added one behind that where it was broken and the factory one's broken there. So I added one there. And I added some terminal blocks here. In case anybody's wondering, this flimsy looking ground wire is factory here. I did add one and there is the uh, relay for my lift pump. Also, in the comments, I saw somebody said this is not designed for a lift pump. It's 
It's designed for a push pump. I think I mentioned that in the video that it is, it is actually a push pump, not a lift pump, as it says in the directions. Some had actually advertised this as a lift pump. I don't really care what it's designed to do. I care what it will do. And I like that you can get this at O'Reilly's that ever broke. And I'm, it's right out here in the open. So if this does go bad, I can get a ride to O'Reilly's and replace it easily. Everything will plug in the same. <clears throat> but I haven't had any issues. I drove it around a couple weekends ago and runs fine. So I added these terminal blocks. So if I do want to add anything else in the future, I have a couple of extra terminal slots. Uh, so here's under the dash. You can see distributor wire there coiled up just in case. I don't know. I may have to go back to the distributor for some reason. I can pull this out and run an HEI and just swap the settings. But everything in here is held up with a mag daddy mag. It's a 10 pound pull. This way I didn't have to drill any holes. And I drove this 20 miles the other day. No problems at all. You can see I've got that there and the relays have several magnets there and this is all very secure. You figure each magnet holding 10 pounds. This has uh, got like an 80 pound capacity in there. And then it just goes through the hole in the uh, dash. Just great thing about a metal dash. And then I move my monitor down here. In case you have a C10, if you run your wires up through here, there's a hole right there they can come out and you can run into your carpet or whatever need be right there and amp wire still need to tuck but yeah so we'll cover this up and everything will be tucked away It's gonna work this time. It did not work with my other USB, so if it doesn't work, just know that sometimes it's the USB. Hey, look at that, totally different. Ignition, okay. Ignition timing base type. Ah, Tulby. <laughs> I just want to point this out to you guys in case uh, the Aces guys are watching. This is spelled wrong. I always have to catch this kind of stuff at work on die prints. It's always like, hey. Most of the time it's stuff that doesn't match the setup sheet, but I have to call the engineers and tell them that they messed up. The print. Happens a lot. No big deal. Might fix that though. Larry Morgan 2635 asked, Once installed and established, do you have to leave the monitor attached? Or can you store it in the glove box? Meaning, are you constantly messing with it? Once you've tuned, do you really use the monitor any longer? That's a good question. So, I've got it unhooked, as you can see. No uh, handheld. I'm pretty sure it'll start up just fine. I think it is just a monitor. So let's see, this has been sitting a couple days. Let's give you a good idea how much louder the lift pump is now that it's mounted to the inner fender. Sounds a little, uh, sounds like I got a big pump going on there. Okay, I'm having to do this down here because my wiring is now under the dash, so I can't just pull it out of the engine bay. <clears throat> User L01ZR7MI9Q, can you do a video on how you did the wiring and how you're running an HEI dist distributor? Okay, so you got your HEI. It's pretty simple. I didn't respond quickly because I'm like, this guy actually bought one of these. He has the manual and it tells specifically in there how to do this. But I'll do a video on it anyway. 
Uh, as you can see on your HEI, there is a tack spade right here. And you're gonna wanna put the gray wire, I left this untied up just for this video. There's a gray wire and the harness. And it says tack input slash coil negative. That's all you need. You put that on here for your coil output to your computer, and that's all you need for an HEI. There is no programming of timing with ignition with an HEI. It basically is just a distributor. Your fuel injection will just be fuel, no ignition control. So you'll have your tack come out of here. That's it. The same goes for uh, a points ignition setup. You can also run the negative coil, the negative side of the coil on that wire for a tack input. Hope that helps. I, I do like uh, some of these comments are negative at first, but then they come out kind of positive. This video wasn't even on the kill shot. 90% of it was just gibberish, but it was a cool video to watch. Thanks for putting it out. Uh, seems like kind of a mean tweet, but also thanks for watching. <laughs> it's my new steering wheel. I know the metal flake's a little loud, but I thought it looked 70s. That's awesome. It goes really well with my CB AM FM radio. That's right. I need to put a PA in here so I can yell at people like on Days Confused. That'd be cool. Get out there and work on something this week. Thanks for watching Hobbies and Hot Rods. If you'd like to see a feature on this 1980 Dodge, comment below. It's got a 6 liter with an NV4500. It's coming along nicely. Not quite finished. Comment below. Springs around the corner if you would like to see some information on old mountain bikes and fixing up, well, no bike is cheap now, fixing up cheap bikes to a, a nice rider, comment below. And we'll be talking about some newer bikes, comment below. Also, like and subscribe, thanks for watching, Hobbies and Hot Rides.